If there's one thing America stands for, it's unfettered free speech. But one of my great fears is we're losing that in America, unfettered free speech. Most Americans are willing to take abuse, go to the shop, be engrossed, totally engrossed in uh, materialism and forget about the right to get out there, stand and debate and fight. In fact, the links to which the movements such as the Occupy movement have gone just to raise issues about free speech in public spaces shows you that it's become a real problem. The old town square where people used to go debate and talk, those have disappeared as corporate America has taken over most spaces. Now you have shopping malls where there really is no right to speak, most courts say, unfortunately. Uh, as uh, the government has taken over more and more public spaces, public universities buying up half of towns where they don't allow anyone to have free speech. And if they have, they want some, to speak out or protest a speaker or a politician, uh, they're forced into so-called free speech zones. Uh, just imagine uh, some of the great movements in history, such as the Civil Rights Movement, Martin Luther King, if he had been forced into what they call free speech zones today, pushed into an area off to the side, maybe 200 yards or sometimes a mile away from the people you're protesting, no one hears your speech, we probably wouldn't have gotten the Civil Rights Act. But the point is that in history, various cultures have advocated areas, public areas, which I would call uh, free speech forums, where people came together, talked, debated, read poems. You had the Agora in ancient Greece, where people came together to do those things. In fact, biblical figures like the Apostle Paul went to Greece to debate people on religion. You could debate religion, politics, poetry, literature, uh, the political events of the day. Uh, in Rome, the Rome, Rome had the forum. It was connected to the marketplace where people could hear what you had to say, uh, where people advocated ideas and where an attempt to establish democracy uh, was advocated. Then you had Faneuil Hall in revolutionary America, which was a meeting place for activists, the original Tea Party people. Samuel Adams gave his great speech uh, right before the Revolutionary War, where we got the Declaration of Independence and our freedom, where he advocated that the British be removed from the colonies. Uh, today, Faneuil Hall, however, has a 30-day waiting period of permit. In other words, if, if you're too radical, you're probably not going to get that permit. So Samuel Adams today, if he appeared at Faneuil Hall, would probably not be allowed to speak. The erosion of free speech uh, really started in the 1960s when you had all the activist movements and the powers to be became frightened by, by what they were hearing and started advocating, as I've said, these so-called free speech zones, which many universities use where they put ch uh, young protesters in side alleyways, again, where uh, the people they're really protesting against can't hear their speech. It's the message that's feared. Uh, George Bush used them very adeptly. I mean, you couldn't get near George Bush with a picket sign. I know, we had some cases where we dealt with that. The Democratic National Convention in 2004 used a free speech zone. It was a caged fence where they put so-called protesters and advocates away in a cage where they filmed them. One judge who ruled on the case saying they were unconstitutional said it was frightening. It was like Orwell's 1984. Uh, so they still use those, by the way. In the last, in 2008, the Democratic National Convention had a free speech zone. And the thing about the zones is they push people away, away from where, where, the, where they, they can't protest and uh, the people they're protesting against can't hear what they have to say. To me, America is a free speech forum. It's where we should be debating everywhere. We should be arguing, uh, debating, uh, because look at the culture we have today. We have a country that economically, politically, and culturally is falling apart. Uh, there are a number of commentators saying America looks like ancient Rome. It's in decline. It's going to collapse. But one thing that could save it would be active citizens getting active, getting involved, establishing free speech zones like they had in ancient Greece or Rome or Faneuil Hall in Boston, uh, where we can come together, speak, and where we can draw people uh, into those areas. Cyber free speech uh, forums would be a great idea. City councils should be setting those up where public access television, Americans can get on TV and advocate ideas. What are we afraid of? Are we afraid of free speech? Really it comes down to there's only several ways that you can uh, really affect democracy. One is 
uh, what I'm proposing is setting up free speech uh, forums around the country where we can advocate and debate. People can hear our ideas so we don't have to have people sitting in parks trying to get the media to cover them. You can go to town hall meetings and things like that and raise hell. Uh, that happened with the Tea Party during the last elections and what happened is our so-called politicians, our elected representatives now avoid town hall meetings. They show up impromptu and they only show up, show up at controlled events where absolutely no one can be uncivil and raise some important questions. In other words, advocate and speak your mind on the important issues of the day. Uh, civil disobedience, Martin Luther King used that well to get the people's attention. And of course, there's the bad way, the way that we don't way, want, and that's the, the evil way, and that's violence. But I'm afraid that if we don't uh, allow unfettered free speech in America, some people are going to go underground and become violent. Remember, the First Amendment is a steam valve. It lets people blow off uh, their steam. It lets them express their ideas. If we bottle that up, they do go underground, as we know, in this culture, other cultures, and become terrorists. We don't want that. So we need to uh, advocate free speech in our schools and our governments. Our politicians have to expose themselves to us so we can ask important questions about the things that are going on in government. I mean, really, I've uh, been a constitutional lawyer for over 30 years now, and I've seen how corrupt government is from the local level, the state level, up to the federal level. Uh, our politicians need to be held accountable. And we need to have that right that's protected in the First Amendment. We need to express it, the right to free speech, the right to petition our government. We have a right to protest and tell our government our concerns. And when we think they're wrong, to say it loudly and so they can hear it. There's no better time than now to do this. Set up a free speech forum in your community. Read my commentary. Speak out. America is a free speech forum at rutherford.org and exercise your rights folks or we're going to lose them.